Hello, everybody. So uh, I see lots of questions on how to test uh, your programs right now. And those questions are uh, more because uh, your program prints a lot of stuff on the display and it, it also asks a lot of input from the users, right? And this is why those applications are so cool because you interact with the final user. But then how do you test it? Uh, just to get started and to help you, uh, I'm going to provide you with some functions that will help you to test your program. So follow my example here. I just have a very simple function in here, my example function. It prints hi, and then it asks the user uh, about his or her name, then the favorite animal, and then it just prints a final message. If I run this program, hi, tell me your name. So my name is um, Mauricio. Uh, my favorite animal uh, is uh, cats. So this is what my program does, right? Your program is a bit more complicated than that because you have ifs and loops and etc. But the idea will be the same. So how do we write a test for this program that prints? And uh, by printing, the, the, the challenge of, of printing is that I need to assert, you know, what was printed on the screen. And how can I also test something that asks for keyboard input, right? So the, the person has to write something. So uh, we're going to test it like this. Uh, so take a look at my test one here and there are two functions I want you to learn so this first one is set keyboard input and this function basically replaces the keyboard for uh, with the list of inputs we are passing so uh, you see that I'm passing an array and that's why I have those uh, those uh, brackets in here and then I pass two different values so Mauricio and dogs and as you can see from uh, the previous execution of the program, my program asked for two things. The first one is the name, the second one is the favorite animal. And I'm just passing here uh, Mauricio and dogs. Basically what this is going to do again is the first time this input is executed, the set keyboard input will return the first value. It's, it's going to return Mauricio. Uh, the second time the input is invoked, we are going to return dogs. Yeah, so this is what we are going to do. We are going to replace the keyboard and by, you know, passing hard-coded strings. Uh, so now that I just uh, taught my test what to do whenever there's a keyboard function in there, then we call the function we want to test. So we this is the function we want to test. The function executes. Uh, and then we need to do assertions. And our assertions in this case will be on what was printed on the display and how do we get this we get this by means of this get display output so as soon as you run this test instead of printing on the screen uh, our um, magic that is going on behind the scenes is actually capturing everything that should be on the screen and put and putting this on an array so if you see here uh, this output returns an array and the array contains all the lines that were printed on the screen. So, hi, tell me your name, tell me your favorite animal, and then uh, the final string, hi Mauricio, you like dogs. Uh, let me change because I actually like cats. Yeah, nice. Uh, and then with, with this we can do the, the assertion, right? So, uh, the output should be in this order, hi, tell me your name, tell me your favorite animal, hi Mauricio, you like cats. If I run this test, let's see, it is green, right? It works. Let's just try something. Let's suppose uh, uh, we pass dogs in here, but the assertion is, is still with cats, so this test should fail now. Good, it fails. If I click on it, then you can see that, you know, I was expecting, tell me you like dogs, but the actual was, tell me you like cats. So this actually works. Uh, and this is, let me fix this again, so this is cats. Uh, so this is how you are going to write tests for your program. I just put a second one here so that you can see um, um, that I can have more than one test at the same time. So Davide likes dogs. So then the final array should be, hi, tell me your name, tell me your favorite animal. Uh, because I passed Davide, so it's going to be, hi, Davide, you like dogs. Uh, and then I can run both of them. Both of them pass. Yeah. Uh, your job, based on everything you learned on software testing, will be now to come up with many different scenarios, test cases, 
uh, and you're going to basically replace the inputs in here, right? So instead of you typing your stuff, you just invoke this function with with the values um, you want to simulate, right? And all this magic was written by us. Uh, and for this to work, you basically have to have this TUD testbase.py file inside of your test folder, yeah? So the content of this file uh, doesn't really matter. You can try to understand it and you can STAs to, uh, to help you to understand it. Uh, it's just some magic Python behind the scenes to replace the keyboard and to replace uh, the display. Uh, as soon as you have this file in there, uh, when you start using these two functions, set keyboard input and get display output, you're going to have to import it, right? And uh, that's what I did here. Uh, and you can use PyCharm for that, right? So if you just write the function in there and then you press Alt Enter, PyCharm will suggest you uh, to import it and usually the first option works, right? So I imported the set keyboard output uh, input. It wrote this uh, line over here. I can just import the second one. Everything works. Let me run one more time. Yeah, everything works. So uh, this is my suggestion on how you can start to test. Of course, uh, in many situations, you can try as much as possible to isolate your inputs and outputs from the real business logic, right? So let's suppose you have some sort of algorithm uh, as part of your program. If you isolate this algorithm from inputs and outputs, you can easily write unit tests for it. So that, that is my first suggestion. So before using this method I just uh, showed you, try to see if you can, you know, just move code around, create functions that do not depend on the input and the print functions. Uh, because if you do so, then it, you, you can test. But sometimes it's just very complicated. Your business logic is really connected with inputs and outputs. Uh, and then in these cases, you can use the method I just introduced you. Yeah? So good luck testing your projects.